All right, so in our last segment, we got the left-hand menu here working so that we can go hover over one of these, move through the list, click on something. We get the camera down here at the bottom. And what I want to do now is I want to work on this section here, the white section. And my goal is I want to do two things. I want to be able to click on one of these intersections and I want to get a big map and I want the map to show me exactly where this intersection is in Toronto. So that's the piece that I'm going to do right now. And to do this, I'm going to use a third party library called Leaflet. And I'll just take you to the website here. So Leaflet is it's a fabulous, fabulous library. You've definitely used it before on lots of websites. It's it's a free mapping library that you can use in any um, web application that you're doing that needs to, to work with maps. And I'm going to use it to basically create something like this. So we're not going to go super deep into the code. There's lots you can do with it. We're going to stay pretty basic. We're going to make a map. We're going to put a marker up and we're going to make it so that when you click on things, it moves around so that we can do this. So in order for us to be able to support this, what I need to do is make some modifications. Right now I have a main section and I want to break the main section up into two. At the top I'm going to leave a place for images to go and down below that I'm going to put the map. So let's start by making some modifications to our HTML. Inside of our main I'm going to put two other divs. So I'm going to have a div and the first one is going to be for my images which we'll do in the next video. So I'll just leave a space for it now. And this one will be for our map. And I'm not, not going to put any content in the map because Leaflet is going to, it's going to handle putting all of the content in for me. So how do I use Leaflet? Well, it's a mix of CSS and JavaScript. And so what I need to do is I need to load their CSS and JavaScript. So let's make some more adjustments here. So right now in our file, we have a section here in the head where we load our CSS. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a section above that. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to load Leaflet's CSS. So if you look at their quick start guide, they have some notes here on how to uh, load their CSS and how to load their JavaScript file and then later how to set up the code. So I'm going to put in I'm going to put in their uh, CSS like so. So I have another style sheet that's being loaded. This is the leaflet CSS style sheet and it's going to get combined with my styles to be able to build this and I need to do the same thing with their scripts. So I'm going to load in their scripts. So if you look at what we're doing down here, we're loading in our camera data, we're loading in our our main index.js file and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another uh, section here where I'm going to load in Leaflet's JavaScript file, like so. So I've got a CSS and a JavaScript file being loaded, so I'll save that and let's go take a look. So right now nothing happens, but if we look at the network, we can see that my web page is loading, Leaflet is loading in the styles, my styles are loading, Leaflet's JavaScript file is being loaded, my traffic camera data, etc. All of it's being loaded here, so we're ready to start making use of it. Okay, so let's work on making a space for everything to live here with CSS. So I have another layout problem, and Flexbox is going to be something that I can use because I want to take all of the space that lives inside of my main from here to here. And I want to split it up so that there's a section at the top and then the rest of it goes for the map. So the image is at the top and then everything else down below. So in our style sheet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say that my main is going to be display flex. I want it to show all of its contents using a flexible width and height. And I want to... Uh, also in the main, I want to change the default direction because by default, Flexbox flexes to the right. So that's row flexing and I want to do column flexing. So I'm going to flex the direction column like that. 
So now what I can do is I can specify styles for my images and my map. They're both, I'm going to reference them both by ID. So I'm going to say map and images. Maybe I'll put images first because it's logically ahead of it just so you can see how these things relate. So for my images I'm going to tell Flexbox that I want to give it one unit of flex and I'm going to give it uh, some colors. I want to use some colors that are going to look good with my map so I'm going to set a background color and a font color here for the images. And right now you can see that images is taking up the entire space like nothing else because we haven't set a flex for this. It's just occupying all of the space. So I'm going to fix that and I'm going to say that I want the map to flex three units. And that pushes this up. So now I have a hole where the map can live. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the map that I want its height to be 100% of the available space. So from here to here, I want it to occupy all of that space. And I do that so that when I put my, my leaflet map in there, it knows exactly how much space it has available to it. Okay, so the next step is I need to write a little bit of code. And let me just show you what leaflets code looks like. So if I wanted to produce this map right here, I would need to write code that looks essentially like this. Three different steps. I need to create a map and with leaflet you use this L object. L stands for leaflet. So leaflet.map allows you to draw a map into an element. So in this case an ID of map. And I can set it for a particular latitude and longitude and, and zoom level. So this is the first thing that we need to do. So let's do the same thing on Let's do the same thing on our map. However, for our map, I'm interested in, we're, we're working with Seneca, so why don't we use the coordinates for Seneca? So what I've got here are the Newnham College uh, buildings coordinates, and I'm gonna use those for my latitude and longitude when I'm, when I'm building this. So I'm gonna go back over here to my main index.js, and right now when the window loads, I'm building my menu, but I'm going to add a second step, which is I'm going to build my map. Whoops. So I'm going to build my map. All right. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define coordinates for Seneca as an array. So 43. 7, 9, 5, 2. And in order for this to work, I have to do negative here for the west. I'll do 79.3497. And there's our initial coordinates for Seneca. And I need to define a map. So what I'm going to do, because I need to use this map in other places, I'm going to say that my map is defined out here. I'm going to define my map globally like this. And I'm going to say map is equal to L. So let's go back to the leaflet code so you can see how this works. I'm going to say L dot map. I'm going to give it the name of my ID, which is right here, map. And I'm going to tell it to set its initial view to be on Seneca's coordinates. And I'm going to tell it to zoom in to level 16. So you can, on a map, like I'll show you on this map here, I can zoom in or out. And you can see how, depending on how much you zoom in or out, whoops. Let me refresh this, sorry. If I zoom in or out, you can see how the map is adjusting based on that. Okay, so we've done that. If I were to save this and run this now over here, you can see that I have my map, it's working. Except that you can't see anything on it because a map needs to have a set of tiles. So the way that these maps work is they load images and each of the images is a background that shows you part of the map. But you can see that it's actually working. So I have a section here where my map lives. I've got a plus and a minus, but there's just nothing loaded here. So let's fix that. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load a set of tiles. And Leaflet comes with all different tiles that you can download. This is beyond the scope of what I want to do in this exercise. But if you want to research this, there are many, many different tiles that you can get. And some they look quite different. Some of them are topographical or satellite or all different types of images. But I'm going to load the default set of OpenStreetMap tiles, which is going to look a lot like what you're seeing here. So after I've created my map, I'm going to specify that I want to load these tiles in and I want, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to add them to my map. So I'll save that. And uh, let me uh, let's see, what have I forgotten to do here? Oh, I think it's just that my network is being ridiculous. Let me disable my cache and let me refresh this. And it also looks, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of the ocean. 43, let's try that. There we go. So now I have a map, here's Seneca, and this looks good. I've got a map, I can zoom the map in and out like so zoom in and it will load in whatever image tiles that need to be loaded in order to show that map. So the last piece that I want to do is I want to I want to put a a pin up on a marker on my map like this. And the code to do this, you can create a marker by specifying a latitude and a longitude and then add it to the map. So the the way that I want our code to work is that when you click on one of these over here, I want to set a marker at that position and I want to move the map left or right depending on wherever you need to go in order to display uh, to, to display that latitude and longitude. So let's do that. So in our code we already have a way to know when the user has clicked on a map item. So we added an event listener to our nav. Whenever they click we get the we get the target element that was clicked. We get its ID, which gives us a, the camera's number. And then we find that inside of our traffic cameras array and we're currently just printing it out. Well, let's modify what we're printing out here. I'm actually mostly interested in the camera's latitude and camera longitude. So if I uh, save this, and refresh. And if I click on one of these now, what you're seeing here is you're seeing the latitude and longitude of that particular intersection and camera, which is what I need for my map in order to be able to put this information up. So instead of printing this information out, what if I call the function update map? And what if I call it with the camera's latitude and longitude like so? So that means all I have to do now is I have to uh, write a function called update map, which takes a latitude and a longitude. And I need to use that information in order to move my map. So how do I move my map? Well, I can say map.setView and I can just change the latitude and longitude to the new coordinates that were passed in to me. So let's try that first of all without doing anything else. So if I click on one of these streets, my map moves, which is very cool. So as I'm clicking around, my map is moving and wherever I click, my network's gonna be slow here. So it loads in and on these other tiles will load eventually, like so. That's very cool. Now, if I were to add a little bit more code, I should be able to set a marker. I should be able to put a marker at a particular spot and add it to my map. So I want this blue marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set a marker at that position. So I'm going to create a marker just like I did with my map. And I'm going to say 
uh, marker is equal to L dot marker latitude and longitude and I'm going to add that to my map like so. Now the first time that I do this it's going to create this marker um, but really what I want to do is I don't want to leave those markers I don't want to basically leave a mess out here with markers all over the place so what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to check to see if the marker already exists. So if the marker already exists, I'm going to do one thing. And if the marker doesn't exist, I'm going to do a different thing. So if it doesn't exist, so this is if no marker exists, then I'm going to create a marker. If the marker exists, I'm going to move it. Move it to the new location. So instead of creating a new marker like this and adding it to the map, I'm going to take the current marker and I'm going to say set its latitude and longitude and it takes an object where I pass in latitude, lat, and longitude long like that. So I click here, I get a marker. I click here, it moves and I get a marker. Click here, moves and I get a marker. Exactly what I want. This code I could clean up just a little bit. So in modern JavaScript when you have a property name and a value that are the same you can just collapse them together like this. Which makes it a little bit shorter. So now I could actually write my my object definition like this. So we do two things. Number one update the update the marker number two update the map yeah except for my network perfect this is working nicely Okay, so in the next segment, what we'll do is we'll fill in these images which we generated before from URLs and we'll start getting the live images so we can click around in the city and see what's happening.